treats came in. Let's build an engine. First thing I'm going to do is clean the ever living crap out of this engine. Still got all this gasket on it, gunk. I've got to get these seals off and uh, and get the bearings out as well. So let's uh, let's start cleaning. Here's how I got the old seals out. I'm not sure if it's the approved method, but it works. Yeah, well I'm back. I was here on my lunch break. Now I'm back, it's night time, so I can actually really spend some time cleaning this thing people calling you. Just because it's a Tuesday they think you need to work. What the hell? <laughs> anyway, I was using this stuff earlier, this engine degreaser. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but it, it doesn't work for shit. And it smells terrible. Uh, it certainly doesn't work as much as my purple cleaner I have and, and carb cleaner does. So I'm not using any more of that stuff. That stuff's gross. Um, I've got about three hours. I think I should be able to knock the rest of this out. I'm going to get it nice and clean. I did get my, my bearings and seals from treats. So, um, so if I can get this thing clean tonight, I think tomorrow I can, uh, I can start assembling it and maybe get it put together. So, I'm going to put on some tunes and, uh, and get cracking.
I'm going to pull these bearings off. I've got this, um, use this for re-gripping my golf clubs, but I think it's going to work pretty well to wrap around here and get it in my vise without jacking up the crankshaft too much. Hopefully. I got this bearing puller and separator from uh, from Harbor Freight. And since this thing is tapered, I'm pretty sure as soon as I pop it, I should just be able to pull it right off. I don't think I'm actually going to need to use the puller. Boom! There's one. Listen to this. That's not what you want your bearing to sound like. Yeah, see one edge has got is kinda it's kinda chamfered. And the other edge is straight. This edge is the one that goes down towards the actual crank weight, so just got to make sure I put that side right when I do the new one. Twelve thirty. I'm going home. Good job tonight. All right, we're back. I'm gonna put the uh, the seals and the bearings on tonight. Um, I've got the crankshaft and the seals in this cooler. Cold, chilling like a villain. I've got the carters, the cases, and the bearings in a toaster oven right over here. So first I'm going to pull out one of those cases and set the seal in it. Uh, should, that's probably going to be the easy part. I think the bearings are, well hopefully if we do it right, the bearings just slip right on, but we'll see. So uh, here it goes. very important to make sure that the springs are are facing out when you do this to make sure you're starting it totally straight That's one down. Okay, the 
That's a big wonky. Son of a biscuit. Yeah, shit. Oh, there we go. There we go. Looks good too. It was a little bit crooked starting off, but I got it straightened up and went in there correctly. Alright, let's see if we can get those bearings on too. I hope that goes really easy, but you know what? I've got this pipe I'm gonna cut, so if I have to tap them a little bit, I'll be good. But let me go ahead and cut this first. Of course. I went back. A couple little taps and it's on. Hey, it's time to put this thing back together. Before I do though, I want to see if I need to port match it at all. Especially here on those little side chases to see. I just want to make sure that these totally match up um, with, with these side chases coming off of the cylinder. Just gonna mark it with a paint pen and then shove it right back on. Make sure I got that the right way, that way. And uh, see, see if I can see where it's landing. Okay, so you see our paint pan left where that chase comes in and you can see this isn't nearly big enough. And I'm certainly not going to get in there and start doing like real porting where I mess with the, um, the actual ports, although I probably will kind of chamfer the edges a little bit because they feel a little rough. But I will do that. That seems like a that seems like a no-brainer. It's not going to hurt anything, and it might help stuff. So why not do it? Now we have the areas that we're cutting out. You can see them without the white tape on. That's what's coming out. That doesn't look like a lot. And it isn't a lot, but hopefully it makes a little, di little bit of difference. And then, like I said, we're also going to go in and, and go in here and kind of chamfer these edges a bit. And uh, maybe kind of open up the... Open these up just a touch. Important to wear eye protection. You don't want some of these metal shards in your eyes. Let's 
see. I'm not really porting it. I'm just cleaning it up a little bit. I just kind of cleaned them up and made them smooth. I don't know if you can see up there or not. I'm just making sure these things are 100% absolutely freaking perfectly clean. Looks all right. It's not perfect though. It's not as good a fit as I was hoping for. I'm going to grease these up just a touch. Just to make it a little bit easier. I'm going to do this side first. Which is the side with the circlip. So I think all I gotta do is heat it up and then it should slide right in. Yeah, that's feeling pretty damn hot. Circlip side. Hope this slides right in. Look at that. Get on. Damn, that's hot. That's hot. They go for it. Look at that. Gorgeous. So we'll put one of these in just to line them up. Get it all squeezed in. Being a bitch, drinking out of cups, being a bitch. Let's put the cylinder on. just to get it nice and straight and then we'll tighten it all down. I'll come back and put the bracketry on afterwards. Like I said, I just want to make sure that we got it perfectly straight. Alright, so status update. I'm going to try to show you. If you look in here, you can see this bearing on the bottom there is just a little bit proud. Which means this side doesn't equal this side. So my thought is Wow, that's super hot. Hold on and I'll tell you my thought. So my thought is to take this piece of pipe that I cut, put it on like that, then take my Novi nut and screw it on. 
and then lock this. I think I, there we are. And now when I screw this Novi nut down, it should pull the bearing up. That's my thought. And hopefully this pulls it up. Let's see what happens. Oh, that worked like a champ. I think I need a little bit more. Let's put it that way. All right. Look at that. Look at that. Dead center. That was smart. I'm a smart person. Never ever say, I'm a smart person, out loud. The moped gods will bite you in the ass. Well, While that worked, it also jacked up the threads inside that Kenobi nut. Oh yeah, it fucked them up good. Alright, status update. Well, I screwed up. I did, my plan did manage to get our crank perfectly centered, but I stripped the Novi nut, the threads on the Novi nut. That's not that big of a whoop, because I have another Novi nut from the other moped, and I'm putting CDI on that one, so I have another nut for that, so this one's actually extra. So, <clears throat> so that's not so bad, but, I also stripped some of the threads on the crank, which is bad. Now, I have a race crank for the other Moby, so once again, it's not completely devastating, but I've got this thing perfect now. You know what I mean? I mean, I've got the, the, the crank perfectly centered. I've got new gaskets, new seals, new bearings. I'd hate to take this thing all the way apart again. So my plan is I've got the thinnest blade possible on this Dremel. And I'm going to try to go through here and clean up these threads a little bit. I have done that successfully once before on a, uh, on a bolt on my MG, um, but I've also failed at that a few times too, so, uh, so I'm not really sure how this is going to turn out, but the only thing I can do is try and see what happens. <laughs> I think I got it. I think I got it. That's a win. I'm gonna trim up this um, 
This little bit of gasket peeking out. Yeah, it looks nice. As is often the case, this gasket's not perfectly cut. And so it's it's blocking some like see here's here's where we ported that thing out. And you can see it's kind of overhanging it a little bit. It's overhanging right there. So I'm gonna trim up this gasket just a touch to make sure we have full openings. A nice sharp blade makes all the difference on this one. Now I've got it fitting perfectly. You see that little pin right there? And the piston ring fits around it. And we want to make sure that these two pins are facing towards the exhaust. First though, I'm going to oil down this gasket a little bit. Now we're going to put our little our bearing in there. I'm going to oil this up too, I think. It just goes right there. Let's get this orientated so exhaust is going to be that way. sure this goes in like this. Alright. Now we're going to put our wrist pin in. Make sure it's able to spin around and it's really in there. And that one is. And now that we have that in, we can insert our wrist pin straight in there. I've got an old wrist pin. That's what I'm going to use to tap this thing in. What you're looking for is for it to be firm against the wrist pin that you put in there so that you can see the groove on the other side, which we can. Make sure it's in the groove. Let's spin it around. And there we have it. Piston installed. It's blocking me. Don't block me. Don't block me. Decomp goes towards the exhaust. Washer. 
nut. Just getting them started. Right now I'm just tightening them up a little bit, just so nothing falls off. And then we'll come back and do the proper torque here in a sec. You hear that sucking and popping? That's a good sign, listen. Ooh, look. I got all the bracketry on and completely forgot to film it. These Carter bolts are 11 foot pounds and these top ones are 13. 11. And then, I already done forgot what those ones were. And gaskets. 13. 11 to 13, so. I think I'm going to start by torquing them to 8. And then I'll come back and do it to 11. And now we'll go up to 11. There we have it. That's pretty good for today. So here it is. All the way put back together. I was planning on doing everything in this episode. Just part two engine rebuild. And I'd have the, the clutch on and the, the flywheel magneto on. Um, but I was noticing last night that I was having a hard time getting torques on these um, on these bolts. So hard, in fact, that uh, oops. So I ordered some new bolts from Treats, which will come this weekend. So I guess I'm going to go ahead and just post this episode and um, and then make a part three where I I put the clutch on and the the points and then set the timing and everything in in the next episode. So, um, that's about it for this one. Thanks for watching.